Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're welcome to church. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go to the Lord's house. I want to believe we are all glad to be here this evening. Um, today is another day of encounter with the King of Kings and with the Lord of Lords. And I want us to have um, that expectation that we are going to meet with the King of Kings and with the Lord of Lords tonight. So we're going to be praying this afternoon. First of all, I just want us to thank God for bringing us here. I want us to appreciate him for another opportunity to be in his presence. Uh, let's thank him for the air that we breathe. Let's thank him for the gift of life. Let's thank him for, for his healing. Let's thank him for his blessings. Uh, this month has been tagged our month of blessings, so let's begin to appreciate God. And um, I just, just, just thank him from the depths of your heart that we are alive today, that we are healthy is enough reasons to appreciate God. I just exalt his name. I just thank him. Thank him from the depths of your heart. Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for another great opportunity to be in your presence. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for provisions. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for watching over our going out and our coming in. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our children. We thank you for the church. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for everything. Father, Lord, we may not be where we want to be, but we are grateful for where we are today. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, Lord, we thank you. We exalt your name. We bless your holy name tonight. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Your word says that I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his court with praise. Father, Lord, we are here in your presence tonight. Father, we say thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for calling us your own. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, I want us to thank God. The Bible says that we should give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endures forever. I want us to thank him once again. Just thank him for anything, anything that comes to your mind. Just thank him. Be intentional about your thanksgiving. Thank God. God, I'm grateful to be called your son. I'm grateful to be called your daughter. I'm grateful that you sacrificed your only son to die for me. Father, I'm grateful. Your love is unconditional. Your love is everlasting. Your love never fails. Despite all my wrongs, despite all my fault, you still love me. You still love me. Irrespective of what I have I've done or what I'm going to do or what I've done, Lord, you still love me. Thank you for your love towards me. Thank you for your kindness towards me. Thank you for your message towards me. Thank you for always forgiving me my sins. If you are to consider our iniquity, no man, no one will be able to stand before you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight, we are here once again to have an encounter with God. There's a saying that when the purpose of a thing is not known, that abuse becomes inevitable. It's possible that over time, we become used to the fact that we just come to church. Let's just come to church for service, whether week, midweek service or, or Sunday service. And we don't 
come into God's presence with intentionality. We don't come into God's presence with, with a purpose. And oftentimes people leave without having an encounter with him. So tonight I want us to pray that, Father, tonight I want to have an encounter with you. Tonight I want you to meet me at the point of my needs. Tonight I want you to send forth a word a word that would change my situation, that would change my circumstances. I want you to send forth a word that will, that will catapult me into the realm of blessings, into the realm of un, unending blessings. Tonight, I want to meet with you. Tonight, I want to meet with you. I don't want to leave your presence the same way I came. I want to leave your presence transformed. I want to leave your presence a new person. Father, Lord, reach out to me tonight. Father, visit me tonight. Father, visit me tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, make your presence known. You have promised that whatever two or more are gathered in my name, that there you are in their midst. Father, Lord, make your presence known tonight. Visit me tonight. Visit us tonight in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to commit the vessels that God uh, is going to, the vessel that God will be using tonight uh, in the praise and worship, in the, in the, in the sharing of the word, uh, in singing, in, in all forms, that God's spirit will rest upon them specially tonight. That God will release a special anointing upon them tonight such that they will minister in a way that they have never done before. Let's pray that the Spirit of the Lord will take over, that no man will be seen, that God will be seen from the beginning to the end. Every aspect of this service, all the vessels that God will use, let Him saturate them with His presence. Let Him saturate them with His glory. Let Him saturate them with His anointing. That God, every vessel that will be used tonight, they will operate under the unction, under the unction and under the anointing of your Spirit. They will sing unto you in a way that they have never done before. They will minister unto you in a way that they have never, uh, they have never done before. They will preach your word and speak your word or teach your word in a manner that they have never done before. Father Lord, let your anointing come. Let your presence saturate this place tonight. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. So we're going to be praying the word briefly. Um, the, the, the theme of the month uh, is blessings. You know, this is our month of blessing. And the text is taken from the book of Ezekiel uh, 34, 26. It says, I will cause my people and their homes around my holy hill to be a blessing. And I will send showers, showers of blessings, which will come just when they are needed. The book of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 13 says it says among the nations judah and israel had become symbols of what it means to be cursed but no longer it says now i the lord almighty will rescue you and make you both a symbol and a source of blessing so don't be afraid or discouraged but instead get on with rebuilding the temple. So our prayer is going to be, we are going to be praying the same verse, but in three ways. So we're going to say, Father, bless me and make me a symbol and a source of blessing. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless me and make me a symbol and a source of blessing to my generation. Father, bless me. Bless me. Bless me indeed. In this month of blessing, honor your word in my life. Let your word be fulfilled in my life. Bless me. 
and make me a blessing bless me make me a blessing to my generation make me both a symbol and a source of blessing make me both a symbol and a source of blessing let your blessings be evident in my life let your blessings be evident in everything i do bless me father bless me father you have promised that this month is our month of blessing lord honor your word fulfill your word in my life in the name of jesus father bless me father bless me bless me indeed bless me in my going out bless me in my coming in bless the works of my hands bless my relationship with you bless my health bless my finances bless my intellect bless my mind bless me all around blessing in the name of jesus bless me and make me a symbol of blessing to my generation in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray I'm going to pray again using the same verse. I'm going to say, Father, bless my family. Bless my home. And make us a symbol and a source of blessing to our community. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this month of blessing, bless my family. Bless my home. Make us a both a symbol and a source of blessing to our community. Make us both a symbol and a source of blessing to our environment. Bless the works of our hands. Bless our health. Make us reference points of your blessings. So that when people are talking about blessings, they will look at our families and say of a truth, this family is blessed. Bless our homes. Lord, bless our homes. You said in your word that we will lend unto nations, we will not borrow from them. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless our homes bless our families make us both a symbol and a source of blessing to our community make us an extension of your blessing to those around us father in this month of blessing bless us indeed bless our homes bless our families bless our parents bless our spouses bless our children bless our siblings bless us let our blessings to lord be evident to all bless us in the area of our health bless us oh lord even in the works of our hands bless us lord we need your blessings your blessings distinguishes oh god let your blessings single us out oh lord out of the crowd in the name of jesus father bless us bless us indeed in jesus mighty name we have prayed the bible says that in the last days the mountain of the house of the lord shall be exalted as chief among all the other mountains and all nations we flood to her so still using the same verse we're going to pray i'm going to say father bless f o hell bless fountain of love and make her both a symbol and a source of blessing to the city of Aberdeen, to Scotland as a whole, and to the United Kingdom. Bless fountain of love. Father, let your bless in this month of blessing, let your church not be exempted. Father, in this month of blessing, let your church not be excluded. Make your church a center of attraction. Make your church a center of attraction of blessing. Let everyone in the city of Aberdeen know for sure uh, that the redeemed Christian church of God fountain of love is a center of blessing bless us make us both a symbol and a source of blessing to this city make us both a symbol and a source of blessing uh, to this community to the whole of Scotland uh, to United Kingdom as a whole uh, Lord bless us indeed bless us indeed uh, bless the works of our hands uh, Bless fountain of love, fountain of love. Let there be fountain of blessings emanating from this church. Let there be fountain of blessings. Let blessings in all forms, in all manner, emanate from this church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the flood gate of blessings be opened upon fountain of love. In the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. We all know the prayer of Jabez. He said, oh, that you will bless me and, and extend my lands. He says, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. Please be with me in all that I do. The presence of God distinguishes. The presence of God confers blessings. I want us to pray tonight. Father, please be with us. Be with me in all that I do. Be with me everywhere I go. Be with Fountain of Love. Be with my family. Be with us everywhere we go. Every area of our lives. Let your presence, O oh God, encompass around us. Bless us, Lord. Be with us. Be with us. Be with us everywhere we go. Father, Lord, we need your presence. Father, we need your presence. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. Thank you for another great privilege and opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you. You are a good father. You are a kind father. You are a compassionate father. You are a loving father. You are a father that cares for his children. And Lord, what a great honor to be called your own. Thank you, Father, for this privilege to be here tonight in your presence. And we know without any form of doubt that we're going to live here blessed. We will live here transformed. We will live here healed. We will live here delivered. We will live here as testimonies to the glory of your name and to the shame of the devil. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we keep clapping those hands? We're in our time of worship. We're in our time of praise. Let's just praise God. We're here to lift his name on high. So let's just say something just sweet to God right now. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We're here to praise you, O God. And as we worship you, let us worship in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we clap our hands like this?
I give you my soul. Is it for your glory, Lord? I give for you, the Lord. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Yes, Lord, Lord, have your way. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, Make it a confession tonight. Make it a confession tonight. Mean it, mean it. Release all unto the Lord. Release all unto the Lord. He knows what He can do with your heart. Release all, even unto Him. Yes, Lord, let everything within me. Lord, have your will, Lord. Lord, have your way. One more time, we'll take it one more time. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Yes, Lord, have your will, Lord. I give for you, my Lord. Every breath that I take, every moment I Just turn that one into a prayer of confession tonight. That you give all unto Jesus. You give all unto Jesus. He knows what He can do with our lives. He knows how best He can move us. He knows what He can do with a sincere and pure worship. Ask the Lord to take over tonight. Ask the Lord to take over tonight. Ask Him to receive all your offering, to receive all your praises, to receive all the adoration that you have come to give unto our Father tonight. Yes, yes, just, just you know, throw yourself in His hands. Let Him see that indeed that you appreciate Him. Let Him see that indeed that you honor Him. Yes, let Him see that indeed that you are so, you know, you know, full of joy to be in His presence. Yes, He knows what to do. He knows what to do. Just surrender yourself unto Him tonight. Oh, the choir have done what they can do. Just submit yourself unto the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus. Have your will, Lord. Yes, Lord, a living sacrifice is what we brought today. We offer ourselves unto you, Lord. Yes, Lord, continue to glorify your name in our lives glorify your name in our church glorify your name oh lord yes Lord. in all that concerns us in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we have worshiped lord you are the one that is able to see into the depth of every man sincerely we come before you throne tonight in humility to honor you, the King of Kings. Lord, we know that when we praise you, sincerely, you will accept us. That is our prayer tonight. Accept all these praises. Accept all this worship, Lord. Let it be that indeed that your presence will never depart from us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You have been speaking to us week in, week out. Lord, we, we pray, speak to us again. Do a new work in our lives. Transform us, O oh Lord. Do that which only you can do in the name of Jesus. Some are here with their burdens. Some are here with their pain. Some are here, O oh Lord, my Father, to just hear a word from you. Please perfect the work that you have started already in the name of Jesus. Let everybody be lifted. Let every pain be soothed tonight. Let there be solutions to challenges tonight in the name of Jesus. May all our lives be touched and transformed by you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I submit myself unto you again, O Lord. 
please lord and as we submit all our tongues unto you use them for your glory and for your glory alone when you are done oh lord my father let it be that all the glory will be unto you not unto man in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen come on let's celebrate the lord hallelujah celebrate the lord very very well hallelujah amen 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 praise god this we may have our seats and i'll ask you to welcome someone beside you uh, you know if they are looking wonderful tell them they are looking wonderful and i'm sure everyone is <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> amen 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 okay we thank god for another wednesday service um and uh, choir honestly god bless you god bless you god bless you hallelujah hallelujah yeah yeah you yeah, are definitely going places and we, we appreciate the grace of god over your lives um we just want to thank god again for the another opportunity that you know, he keeps giving us to uh sit down at his feet and learn um obviously the lord will not put so much into us if he does not have great plans for our life so please i want you to say to yourself the lord has great plans for my life okay i hope when you said it you believe it <laughs> uh, the lord definitely has great plans for our lives and i want to appreciate our pastor our father in the house as well uh, for the opportunity to just share one or two things uh, you know with us tonight um, one request i'll just ask us uh, please, please, let's continue to pray for, for our pastor. Let's continue to pray for He didn't send me, and I hope I won't get into trouble about what I'm about to say. But you know one thing touched me? Uh, it was on Thursday last week. Uh, I, I called him urgently for something. And uh, I said, uh, said he was somewhere. I said, ah, uh, uh, sir, you still ministered a few hours ago at Aberdeen. How come, how did you back again on Saturday, again on the Sunday ministering. Ah! It takes grace, so <laughs> It takes grace. Please, I want us to just honor the, the grace of God over our Father's life. You know, just honor, just, just celebrate. <laughs> celebrate. Celebrate. It's, uh, uh, it, it, takes, it takes a whole lot to do all that and still be able to come with something fresh <laughs> week in, week out. Uh, I pray that all these investments will not be in vain in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, as we start, the usual will ask us to say one or two things or ten things about last week's message. Um, what did you take home? What did the Lord minister to you? How did, how did it impact you? What have you implemented? Am I stretching it now? I don't think so. Okay, who will start with us? I'm intentionally not looking at this side yet because I know that's, that's the reserve. I leave every other thing, I know there will be one or two from that side. Well, I trust this side too will perform today. Okay, so I'm kind of facing us. What did we take home last week? One or two things. Who is going to bail us out from this side? Yes, thank you very much, Ma. Okay, come on, let's encourage her. Oh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about being made a blessing. And we talked about the process of being a blessing. One of the things that I think stuck with me is when you are a blessing, it's not just about you alone, but it's about the fact that that blessing pours out to others. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the difference of being a blessing. Hallelujah. So you are not just blessed alone. Your environment fills you. Every, you know, people around you will know that indeed, through this particular person, we have been blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for that. Any other one? Okay, I can't come towards that side now. You never disappoint us. God bless you. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, sir. Good evening, church. Good evening. Um, last week, we spoke about being made a blessing. And one of the things that stuck with me was that we shouldn't be afraid of being a blessing because Pastor was giving an example of people saying, I don't want to be a blessing because I don't want trouble, right? I don't want to be too rich because that comes trouble with it and all of that. But it is a privilege to be a blessing. And God, who has blessed us, will be the same one giving us the grace, the capacity, the way out of trouble and all of that. So that was very encouraging to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you very much for that. If we say, how many people want to be pastors here? Okay, okay, okay. Why not? It's a great blessing, great opportunity to be a great blessing. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't have said what I said earlier on <laughs> about traveling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Any other one, please? Any other one? Anyone to take home? Maybe one last one. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. I think uh, the, the first point from last week was around. You, you aren't blessed till those around you, or you don't consider yourself the blessed till those around you uh, are blessed from, from you as well. And I think during the week, um, meditating on that, the story of Tabitha came to mind, Acts 9. Um, her miracle was literally because she was a blessing to her community. Mm. And she was raised back to life based on the testament from the widows as well as Peter's account or uh, uh, Peter's account of what she's been doing in our community. So we are blessed not just for ourselves, but for our community. And it goes beyond that because those blessings would actually bear fruit when you least expect of it. Amen, amen, amen. Very, very good. Very, very good. Nothing to add to that at all. Um, unless there's anyone at Desperate, I'll just move on to okay. make a blessing. And that's the summary there. I could only pick just a couple. Please go back and listen to that message. Um, you know, it, it's such, such a blessing. Um, and I think we've mentioned the first one. Um, I, I like this. On that important statement on blessing, that second point I put there, I think it's actually point. Yeah, it's the second point. I really love it. It says the real measure of, of success is how much a blessing a person is to his or her world. I pray that by this definition, we shall be really, really successful. Which means we shall be blessings unto those around us, unto our world, in the name of Jesus. My desire is that even all these young ones, right from age two, right from age three, after all, John the Baptist started leaping for joy right from the womb. Let it be that right from such young age, by the mercy of the Lord, there will be great blessings in the name of Jesus. And of course, the process of blessing, which, which, which we have mentioned, I like those four points as well, compassion, culture. Go and listen to it again. Hallelujah. Okay, as it's our uh, usual manner, we'll take the April memory verse. Um, I'm going to put it out. Can anyone try? Can anyone try? Even if it is 50% of it. I saw someone pick up their, picture, uh, their phone and they took a picture of it before I took it off. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Can anyone try? What's the scripture? What's the scripture? Sorry, what's the scripture? Can someone just you know, raise up their hand and say it? Yes, my dear. Please wait for the microphone. We want to hear your voice, okay? Ezekiel 20, 34, 26. Ex Ezekiel 34, verse 26. Come on, let's clap for her. Okay. Is anyone able to try the first part of it? Yeah, the microphone is coming. I'll make them and all the places around them a blessing. I'll make them and all the places around them. Okay. All, are, all around them. She, she tried, she tried a little bit. Yeah, let's clap for her too. Okay, Sister Jibola. Uh, 
I will make them and all their homes around my hill a blessing. Okay. The, the showers will come down in their seasons. Okay. And there shall be showers of blessings. Hallelujah. 70%. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pastor Dauda. <laughs> I will make them and the people and the places all around my hill a yes. blessing. Yes. And I will cause the showers to come down in their season. Yes. There shall be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. 99.999. <laughs> okay. Yes. Can we all take it together, please? I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. Hallelujah. I pray that it will be real in our lives in the name of Jesus. Is there a problem with amen today? I said it will be real in our lives. Aha. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, today, before we go into the title, um, I will ask us to suggest a title anyway. Let's read the scripture that I believe the Lord you know, laid into our hearts. It's taken from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Can we read it together just as one body, please? Let's go for it. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation Teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. I suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. Verse 13. So if you sinful know, sorry, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Okay, so that's the text before us today. Um, any like, take comments and thoughts and inspiration? And if you want to give it a, a title, I will, I, will, I will please you know, encourage you to do that. What is the Lord saying to us? Maybe just as a form of guide, my, the focus today will be on, on the current slide that we have now. But please feel free to comment on the other, other slides as well. So, yes, Pastor Solomon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think for me, reading this whole passage over and over again, what keeps coming to me is this. The crux of it is about the Holy Spirit, asking for the Holy Spirit. 
even when you ask and it's, if there's no release immediately keep asking you will eventually there will eventually be a release of the holy spirit because it's all about desire and persistence thank you very much thank you that did very 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 well for us yeah comment title before we go to title let's take more comments because i know once we start with the title one ah very good with that. Comments? Any other thoughts? It's a very, fairly, fairly common scripture. Something I've read so many times. Any other thoughts on it? Yes, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think the, the ending part of the old passage, just the part that stuck with me. Even though at the beginning it was talking about generosity, persistence, and all of that, but at the end, you know, the Holy Spirit pops up. And to me, it just seems as if the Holy Spirit is kind of encompassing, you know, it just shrink everything into, and then in that Holy Spirit, I'll just say, it just encompasses the whole generosity, yeah. blessing. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the Holy Spirit, you have power, you have grace, you have excellence. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for that. Okay. 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 <laughs> we'll just take numbers now. One. Did I say hand there? Okay, that's Pastor Charles. Two. Any other one? Let, let's, let, let's go with that for now, and then we go to the story. Thank you very much, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, for me, I believe why I picked from there is verse 10 it says for everyone who acts receives so it's not for everyone mm. you have to there must be that action of, you must want it you must ask for it so for me I believe the Holy Spirit is not meant for everyone um, but God will help us so that we might seek it and we might want it because with it we can operate better hallelujah hallelujah the Holy Spirit may not work in everyone, but it's for everyone as long as we ask for it, we, we seek it, and all that, okay? But the title is not Holy Spirit, okay? <laughs> well, it's good that we are going along that line. Yes, Pastor Charles. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. I quickly asked Pastor Dami here, what version is this? And he said it is NLT. Yes, sir. And if you contrast that with King James Version, you just say, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. So you think it's just very easy. You know, I have asked, Lord, why have I not received? But this version in verse 9 says, keep on. And that is not an easy thing to do. It might be a year that you're asking, maybe two years, it may be longer. You know, so we really need an internal help, and that comes from the Holy Spirit in order to keep on doing it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We'll definitely come back, come back, come back to that. Anyone with title? Just a minute. Can anyone help us with title? Brother Chiguzi, is that a contribution or title? title? Title, good. Let's go for it. Persistent prayers are sure as blessing. <laughs> Persistent prayer are sure as blessings. Wow, hallelujah. It's not as posh as that. Okay. <laughs> Any other one? Yes, sister, blessing. Push until something happens. Push until something happens. Okay. That's a very, yeah, it's very, it's not as, as that. <laughs> okay, sister. No? It's very simple, actually. The blessing of persistence. The blessing of persistence. Okay, okay, we are getting close. The blessing of persistence. <coughs> we miss prayer out. <laughs> the blessings of prayer. The blessings of prayer. Uh, we'll be talking about prayer today. Um, and um, I, I'll, you know, if, if you look at that image, you know, it conjures quite a number of things to us. Um, you know, one may say maybe the engine broke down. And that's why I've not seen much of this. <laughs> but um, in some other places, you, 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 do, you, do, 
You do, you do get. I don't. I, I, I wonder why you are laughing. Okay. <laughs> um, so it, it may be the, it may be an engine problem. Um, what could also happen? You know, it, it could also be that the car ran out of fuel. Ran out of fuel. Uh, and <laughs> it doesn't look as if there's a filling station around. So that guy is stuck. That's it. Is actually stuck. Is actually stuck. Um, you know, you can relate. You can say a car, that car, or the engine of that car, is like our destiny. That's like our destiny. Sometimes it may look as if our destiny is stuck. The engine. You can say the engine is our relationship with Christ. When our relationship with Christ is stalled, that's a big problem. One is not able to get to one's destiny, to one's destination. We can say, well, we can relate it to power, a prayer. As long as prayer is flowing, there is continuous progress towards the destination. The moment prayer ceases, the moment the level of prayer goes down, you discover that all sorts begin to come to play. And if one is not careful, one may be stuck. And if one is stuck, and one does not rekindle the level of prayer, what may end up, do, hap, hap, what may end up happening is that you may end up pushing your own destiny yourself, which can be a very, very tough thing to do. So, what options does that guy have? And I'll relate it to the scripture very soon. What option does he have? Option one, he can continue to push. He can call AA. <laughs> Hopefully there is network. Yes, he can call AA. And that's eventually what he should do. He can call AA. He can give up, actually. That's an option. He can give up and say, you know what? I'm just tired. Can't be bothered. I don't like the car anyway. And a number of people, it will amaze you, a number of people are just turning the wheels. They have given up on a particular promise, on a particular dream, and hopefully not on, on their destiny. Giving up is not the solution. What this person needs is somehow a filling station. If it's an AA that will bring up whatever, that is what they need. I pray that in any area of our lives where we may feel stuck, the Lord himself will rescue us in the name of Jesus. It happens in a place of prayer. In a place of prayer. In a place of prayer. Um, I've got something there that says to get to our destination in life and to be truly blessed of God and to be a blessing, our relationship with Christ must be intact and the fuel of prayer must flow continuously. So I'm going to ask you to ask your neighbor, do you have fuel in your tank? Do you have fuel in your tank? Is the fuel of prayer flowing? Man. Destiny and prayer. I've got a couple of things there that I'll just quickly go through, and then we can go into the core of the message. First one says that revelation of God's promises are in faces, and they are clarified in the place of prayer. They are clarified in the place of prayer. The truth of the matter is even the best of us, we only know in part. We don't have the full picture yet. At least I don't have the full picture yet. If you look at 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12, and technical please, I will need your assistance a lot here. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 says, For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Ah. Can we have the new, just stick to the new, new, new Living Translation today, please? Okay, I will really, really appreciate it if you can do that. We know in part, that's where I'm going, yes. 
Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in the mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God knew, just as God now knows me completely. We know things just in, in, partially. God does not, does not usually reveal the full journey to us all at once. As you move from one point to another, he reveals some things to you, and those things are revealed in the place of prayer. If you look at Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, when God called Abraham, God called him into blessing. God called him to be a blessing unto many people. You know, the Lord said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Verse 2, please. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing to others. If you look at that scripture very well, we will discover that there, the first, what's the first blessing there? No, no, no. That verse 2, please. Verse 2. The verse 2, where you were before. What's the first blessing there? I'll make you, I'll make you a great nation. By the time you get to Genesis chapter 15, you would discover that although Abraham was, Abraham had already got to a state where he had become a blessing in a way, he was blessed, that original, the first one that will make you a great nation had not been achieved. So I can imagine if I was in Abraham's shoes, I would probably be despondent. After serving the Lord for so many years, after waiting on this promise, after X, Y, Z, X, Y, and Z, how come that original blessing had not been fulfilled? God had to physically take Abraham out, open his eyes, give him a bit of clarity as to what he had in place for him. Not minding that he had given him the revelation initially, but he showed him, he took him, took him into a deeper place of knowing what God had in store for him. Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stairs if you can. That's how many descendants you have. That brought excitement into Abraham. That made him lift up his head again. That gave him encouragement again. Where am I going with this one? When we establish a form of communication, regular communication with the Lord in the place of prayer, someone that's despondent receives fresh grace to move forward. And you know, when I was preparing for this, one of the things that came to my mind was that, in fact, let's just use this, use this example. Someone came into Abaddon. Maybe when you were coming to Abaddon, it was full, you know, filled with excitement. Be with so much excitement of what the Lord will do. What the Lord has shown you. Great promises. But God did not tell you that for the first three months, there will be challenges with accommodation or challenges with whatever, whatever, whatever. If one is not careful, one can get despondent. Is, is God not speaking again? Is God disappointing? God has a place where he's taking you to. In the place of prayer, in the place of communicating with God, you will get further clarity. Let's, we, sh, we cannot afford to joke with prayer. May the Lord himself help us that our prayer life shall be full of fire in the name of Jesus. In the place of prayer, the Lord brings clarity. The Lord brings clarity. Go to the next one. Prayer set things in the right order. Destiny is on stock. Right. Say, let's, just, let's just pray this prayer. Say, Father, Father, please set things in order in my life. Where I am stuck, please send help unto me in the name of Jesus. Prayer set things in the right order. Set things in the right order. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 7. The Bible says, I have seen servants riding horseback like princes and princes walking 
like servants. That shouldn't be. Do we all agree? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. There are things that, are, that, are, that sometimes our destiny may look like, like an anomaly. What shouldn't be? In the place of prayer, things can be on stock. Look at 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. I'll try and tie it together. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. We know the story of David very well. David, David because of what he faced with his fellow men, he was as discouraged as the other guys. Typically, you will expect a leader not to be as discouraged as the other guys. Things were not in order. But by the time David consulted with the Lord, clarity came on what he needed to do. I pray that clarity will come for someone in the name of Jesus. So he himself knew what he had to do. He found strength in the Lord. No wonder the Bible, Jesus Christ says that men always ought to pray and not faint. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Prayer set things in the right order. Number three there. When God wants to bless his people, he often moves them to pray. He often moves them to pray. That is why I'm so excited. We are just midway into the month. The Lord said, asking us, and with all the prayers that we have been praying, is I believe it's because the Lord himself wants to fulfill his promise. He wants to bless his people. When the Lord you know, you know, wants to bless his people, he often moves them to pray. Genesis 32, verses 26. Genesis 32, verse 26, of course, we know the story of, of, of Jacob very well. He had tried all sorts. But when he wrestled, <laughs> when he wrestled with, the, with that angel, when he wrestled with that angel, that was when his destiny shifted. Things that were working the other way around began to work very well. He became truly blessed. When he wrestled with the angel. First, Chron First, Chron First Chronicles 4 verse 10. Was which you know very well. We know that guy called Jabez. I'm beginning to love that guy to bits now. I just love him. Simple prayer. Straightforward prayer. And he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. This guy's destiny was going downhill. The destiny that God had for him was a honorable one. But that wasn't his experience. Until he prayed his prayer. He said he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And you know the sweetest part of that entire story? And God granted him his request. May the Lord grant you your request in the name of Jesus. When God wants to bless his people, he moves them to pray. Exodus 2, 23 and 24. And we can go on and on and on and on and on like that. The Israel. Israel. Until the, these guys were meant to spend 400 years in slavery. I see 400 years is not bad enough. Year 400 came. Up to year 430. <laughs> Things will have continued that way if they didn't cry unto the Lord. And the word of God is coming to someone today. Maybe you just need to cry in a different way. And we'll go into it. Maybe you just need to cry unto the Lord. I'm not saying you have not been crying. Maybe there's something that the Lord is prompting you to do today that would just make the big difference. That would just be like the case of Israel. God said, this time around, I have heard them. And I've come down to rescue them. Hallelujah. When God wants to bless his people, he often moves them to pray. Of course, we can look at Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, Acts chapter 2 as well. Oh, I should have done that. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> can look at Acts chapter 2 as well. How the Lord asked the disciples to gather together to bless them with the Holy Spirit, as we have said earlier on. And I'm praying for someone today that... As long as, as our, the God that we serve, as long as the God that we serve lives, you will be blessed. The prayer that you need to pray to step into the place where the Lord himself has prepared for you, the Lord will move you to pray them in the name of Jesus. Our children, I keep going back to them, right from very young age, the Lord will help them to 
pray some prayers that will, that will shake the world in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that has been stopping us, that has been limiting us from praying the way we should, the Lord will remove them in the name of Jesus. We will enter into our places of blessing and we shall be true blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Let's, let's, let's go to the second section of the, of the study. Uh, we might actually finish um, a little bit early today. Persistent prayer on common blessing. Common blessing. Uh, I, I think we can all agree that there are some blessings that are almost universal. Uh, the Bible says that God pours rain upon the righteous and upon the unrighteous. That's a common blessing. It's a blessing, but it's, 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 it's common. It's common. But there are some blessings that are peculiar. There are some blessings that are peculiar to you as a person, that are peculiar to us as a church, that are peculiar to us as a family. In the place of persistent prayer, we begin to enter into them. If you go back to that Luke chapter 11 verse 9 again, Luke chapter 11 verse 9, just you know, read, you know, if you can read it. It says, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened unto you. You know, it, it, it looks very simple. I think like, like one of our pastors said there, it looks very, very simple. And it should be something that we can implement. But we find out that, <laughs> anyway, we'll come there. If you look at the way the disciples went to Jesus Christ, they told him, that verse, verse, Luke 11 verse 1, we have watched, we have observed you. We know how to pray. We've been praying from when we were young. But we noticed something, that the way you pray and the result that you get is different. Why not teach us to pray? Not how to pray. Because how to pray is easy. Just open your mouth and speak sincerely. Now, the how is easy. It's the ability to actually do the prayer that is the challenging bit. Teach us to pray. And... I believe they desired something that was wonderful, and the Lord granted them. I pray that the Lord will grant us tonight as well, in the name of Jesus. Very, very simple. He says, keep on asking. Ask God in prayer. That's my first point. Like I said, very simple. Just ask God in prayer. Ask God in prayer. You see, the way the Bible puts it, keep on asking, seems to suggest that heaven's supply is unlimited. You can imagine... How do I put it now? Let me use money for, as an example because I, I know. Uh, you can, yes, yes, exactly. Well, uh, someone said I, it, I should use money because you can relate to it. And I totally agree. Hallelujah. If you give someone, if someone asks for something, maybe someone asks for 10 pounds, and you give the person 20 pounds, and you tell the person, keep asking, what does that mean? Supply is unlimited. At least you haven't reached an area where I begin to shake. I believe what the Lord is saying to us is tonight is this. We are under asking. We are under asking. If, I can, if there's an expression like that. He said, keep asking. You've not asked enough. Even when you think you've got tired, you've not asked enough. If we ask enough, I can assure you we'll be far more than where we are right now. So keep asking. That's the instruction. The way to know, the way, the, how do I put it now? If you really, really want to pray, just keep asking. Don't get tired of asking. James 1 verse 5. James 1 verse 5 says that if you need wisdom, just as an example, if you need wisdom, if it is wisdom that you need, Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebook you for... Please let that sink in. He won't rebook you for asking today and asking tomorrow. 
So if he's not rebuking us for asking, why are we not asking then? What's stopping us? Philippians 4 verse 6. Philippians 4 verse 6. You see, if one is not asking, most of, the, most of the time what we are doing is we are worrying. Most of the time that's what we are doing. We're worrying. Philippians 1 verse 6, 4 verse 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. The grace to ask until we receive, may the Lord give unto us. In the name of Jesus. Let me ask, let me throw this question. Why don't we ask as we should? I, I, like, I like it when we do it together. Why, why don't we ask as we should? Can someone help me, please? Why is it that we don't ask as, as we should? Praise Lord. Hallelujah. Probably because you haven't received the last request that you asked for. And so, how does scripture say it? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm. So, you stop asking. You, you get disenchanted or disillusioned. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's very, very true. Very, very true. We sometimes forget that we are saying we haven't received it because we, the time to ask has not passed. You understand what I'm saying? So we can say we have, it's not a case of I didn't receive it. I have not received it yet because I can keep asking. Yes, Brother Jeremy, I think you raised up your hand too. Why do we struggle to, to, to ask? Very simple, but why do we struggle to do it? Praise the Lord. Um, I think pride as well. We think we can do it without the help of God. Hallelujah. We can push that car on our own. That car, that image of that car, we can push it on our own without the help of, of, of the fuel. Yes, yes. Let's look at Mark 10, 51. Mark 10, 51. That's you know, very, very popular as well. It, it's amazing how God knows what we want. For he desires that we ask. You don't, you don't ask the person that is setting the rule why they've set the rule that way. God knows why. He said, you ask. I know we can come up with different theories why God will ask us to, but that's, the bottom line is that that's the condition. Ask, and you shall receive. He asked this guy, what do you want? It's obvious. Everybody knew Bartimaeus uh, in town. I was blind. Said, what do you want? He just asked. But the blind man still had to say it with his own mouth that this is what um, he wants. You know, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. You know, one of the things that I, over the last couple of days, that I've been saying to myself is that if I desire something and I don't have it, have it, let it not be that I didn't ask. Let it not be that I didn't ask. Let it be that God chose not to. <laughs> Let me satisfy my own part. And we know that God will never fail. He's a covenant-keeping God. I know you have questions around that. We'll come back to it. If he has not delivered, it's not because he doesn't want to deliver. Maybe there is still something that I need to consider. But still talking about that, that asking, it's important. Because what came to my mind was, if we all, let's just say that one you know, get, goes to heaven, and God asks you, come, come in, come in. Come and see this room. He opens this large store of the various things that the Lord had in store for one. And said, this is everything I had in store for you, but you never asked. How will you feel? Let it be that at least when I get to heaven, I say, God, I asked. I've, I did my own part. Hallelujah. May the Lord give us that kind of grace in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 says that, that you know, you know what, what eye has not seen, what air has not heard, what no mind has ever imagined, that is what God has prepared for us. What your mind has not conceived, God has prepared. Just ask for it. Ask for it. Ask for it. So maybe you are also saying that, well, Pastor, I've been asking. I've been asking. 
uh, if you have satisfied that condition, Jesus Christ said that, okay, move to the second level. What's the second level? Seek. Seek. Seek God in prayer. Seek God in prayer. What's the difference between asking and seeking? Some of you grammatarians, please help me. What's the difference between asking and seeking? Is there a difference? So what's the difference? <laughs> Pastor David, are you? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, sir. Um, asking, so you could ask, um, where is the guitar? And then someone goes to get it. Or if they don't know where it is, they'll say, I don't know. Seeking, you have to go and look around everywhere. It goes beyond just that ask. You then take some steps to, to see if you can find what you're looking for. Good. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. So yeah, there's a, there's a big difference. Asking is just stating the request, really. Seeking seems to give you this element of desperation around it. When you are seeking for something. Um, I don't know, how many of us have lost something very valuable before? Maybe you lost your wedding ring. Uh, that one, yeah. How do you explain that? You know, you, you, you lost a cert certificate that's so important to you. How do you look for it? Desperately, non-stop. You turn the whole house upside down. That is seeking. It's different from asking. What I believe the Lord is saying to us is this. You have been asking. Be more desperate. Turn the whole house upside down. Put some passion into it. Put some desire into it. Put some desperation into it. <coughs> My own words. I would say, asking is for the gentleman. Seeking is for the desperate those. Yes. This is the kingdom of God, so very violent. And the violent take any by. We can quote it. Let's put it to action. Let's put it to action. Let's put it to action. And the Lord will help us. James chapter 4, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. I discover that in seeking God in prayer, God, you know, because the question is, why statement there that talks about Sometimes God releases some things to us when we ask, but it looks as if until we begin to seek it desperately, or seek him, seek God himself desperately, he may not even necessarily release those things unto us. I believe one of the reasons is that God uses that process to refine our motives. He uses that process to, to refine our motives. I want to give this thing to you, but if I give it to you now, not time issue, a motive issue, Motive issue. Motive issue. If I give it to you now, you will just use it to prove a point. God is not in the business of proving points. God wants to bless. And he wants us to honor him. Not to prove points. Not to prove points. And I hope that, that someone, is, someone, is, someone is, you know, holding on to that. When our seeking, when our asking, when our desire, our desire to have that blessing becomes purer. I, maybe I'm from my, you know, it, it, you know it, it, God seems, of course, no one can catch God. No one can, you can't calculate God. No. But from what one has seen, it looks as if God releases those things to us. Look at James chapter 4 verse 3. He says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because the motives are wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Hmm. Deuteronomy 4, 29. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29. says, but from there, you will search again for the Lord your God, and if you search for him with all your heart and soul, what will happen? You will find him. You will find him. You will find him. Find him. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. Very popular and, you know, a group of us are using that to pray for, for, for a few days now. It says, then if my people who are called by my name, hmm, 
will humble themselves and pray and seek. So which is one can pray and not seek. One can pray and not seek. Say, and pray and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. Some version will say, and I will heal their land. I pray, may every land that may look as if it has been corrupt, may the Lord heal them. In the name of Jesus. Of course, when we are talking about land, you know what we mean. We mean destiny. We mean, you know, you know, the promise. We mean, you know, whatever you are holding on to. It may mean job. It may mean marriage. Whatever. May the Lord heal all. In the name of Jesus. When one is des, we will know how desperate you are by some of the actions that you take. Uh, the Bible, you know, you know, you know, Jesus Christ said that uh, that some things do not go out except by prayer and uh, you are no longer asking now. You are now seeking desperately, taking some steps, prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Look at Hannah. First Samuel chapter one verse eleven. First Samuel chapter one verse eleven. Anna had been praying for a long time. And she had been waiting for a long time. But she had dead seeking to it. Some form of desperation. It would take someone who is desperate to say, give it to me and I'll give it to you back. I always, so that's someone that's desperate. Someone that's desperate. She made a vow. Made a vow. We will know how desperate you are by some of the actions that you take. Seek God. Seek God. Seek God's face in prayer. Seek God's heart in his word. He would, in the process, even if the motive is wrong, God does some, some surgery during that process that begins to align your motive into, to his own. When your motive marries God's motive, and it's a promise that he has given, he releases it. Please, let's, I mean, is someone getting something? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We will not only get it, we will put it to practice and we shall see the results in Jesus' name. Let's quickly go to the third one because I'm saying, well, I've been asking. I've been asking and uh, I've been seeking. Still, nothing seems to be showing. That is the time to move to the third level. Which is the third level? Knock, knock, knock. Okay? Knock on God's door in prayer. How do we knock? Can someone demonstrate it for me? How do we knock? Someone is desperate there. <laughs> you don't do this and see you are knocking. If you do that, it will think, oh, maybe someone, something just hit the table or something. You knock. Nothing. Ah, this person is at home. If you are now desperate, the way you knock is different. Ah, let me use this example. Please permit me to use this example. Try and imagine that. I don't know whether it's only me that it happens to. You want to use the you want to use the bathroom. As soon as you are getting very close to the house, you know, you now get to the house. The door has been locked from inside. You are knocking. The person is not opening. What will you do? Good. Arms, legs, pull the roof down. I believe that is what the Lord is saying there. Continue to knock. Keep knocking. If you want to knock with your hands, knock with your hands. Knock with whatever. Hold on to me. Don't leave that spot. If there is an alternative then it's probably not necessarily required. There is no alternative, Lord. Some of us are in some situations where there is no alternative. Ho, ah, ah. Continue to knock. The benefits of the blessing far outweighs the effort of the knocking. 
If we can only continue, if we can only continue, it appears to me that it's only in the place of prayer that the Lord says it is okay to be stubborn. Usually stubbornness is not something that you encourage. But in the place of prayer, go ahead and be stubborn. Insist. Keep knocking. Hold on to it. Do not give up. Luke chapter 11 verse 8. Luke 11 verse 8. It says, but I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking, how long? He will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And I, lo- I just love that one, shameless persistence. Just keep knocking. Just keep knocking. Just keep knocking. Genesis 32 verse 26, I think we read that earlier on. James 5, 17 and 18. We know the story of Elijah. The Bible, you know, Bible, Bible says it very well that Elijah was a man like us. He was as human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none felt for three and a half years. Verse 18. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crop. May the earth yield its crop for us Amen. as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May those things that have been unyielding, may they begin to spring forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone around you will know that you entered April in the name of Jesus. Our month of blessing. Our month of being blessings. In the name of Jesus. When we read that, James, it looks simple. But if you read the original, <laughs> you will know that it wasn't easy for Elijah. He didn't just sit down and pray and then things happened. The Bible says that he did it over and over and over again. Seven times, if you, if you go further down. Seven times. Eighteen. First Kings 18. 42 to 44. 1 Kings 18. He, seven times. He kept on asking his servant, go back and check. Go back and check. If I was the one, by the time I got to f- the third time, I would be embarrassed actually. Say, don't worry, just sit down. Just sit down. That's why the Bible says, shameless persistence. Keep, people know that is your prayer point. Keep praying it. Keep praying it. You will be vindicated when the Lord answers. Keep praying it. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Don't give up. Elijah did not stop praying until the result came. Ah, our own result shall come Amen. in the name of Jesus. So I believe that in this month of our blessing and being blessings, I believe that there is a task before us. It looks very simple, but it can also be a little bit tough. But because the Lord himself is committed to releasing these blessings onto us so that we can can become blessings, he will give us the grace to ask, he will give us the grace to seek, he will give us the grace to continue to knock. Until the door is open unto us in the name of Jesus. Okay, I've got one last question for us and then we can conclude. How can we encourage ourselves to ask more? When I say ask, ask, seek, and knock, how can we encourage ourselves as a church, as a body, to ask more? Can we? Yes, Pastor Dill. Thank you, sir. So, um, we should believe God for, for big things, Good. but not be too uh, mindful to ask Him for even the smaller Small things. details of our life. Yeah. Good. So we should believe God for. Great things, mighty things. And I, I believe that's one of the things that touched the disciples' hearts. That they said, teach us to pray. Ah, the things that you're asking for. Just small bread like this, 5,000 multiplied. Wow. Uh, 
but still not ignore the small things. Thank you very much. Sir. Yes, ma. Um, I think looking at the question, for the first time, the word ask actually comes in a new meaning to me. So how can we ask more? I think I'm looking at those acronyms and I'm saying that ask, seek, and knock. As long as we continue to do those three, then we can continue to encourage ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Maybe I, let me reframe the question. The question is, how can we as a church, generally, encourage ourselves to ask more? How can we do more of the asking? How can I, you know, you know, you know yes, I think you, you are probably getting it. Yeah. Brother Solomon. Is there one there? But as soon as let's hear him, since we've heard you a few times today. Sorry, Sister Debbie, I was the one that confused you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to use the analogy that you use for seeking, like the ring. You know, you seek something that belongs to you, something that you own. You know? So we need to receive what we're asking for then we'll be able to, if you know that you've received it, then you ask more. You persist to be able to get it yourself. And th that will keep you asking more. We use the word ask, seek more because you've received that, what you need from God. Good. Hallelujah. So our testimonies will encourage us. To, to, okay, thank you. Rasulman, is that what you want to say? That's, that's pretty much what you want to say. Okay, ma, I can't see very well there. Ah, <laughs> Pastor Ijama, thank you very much, ma. Um, I think as a group, to encourage ourselves, we could maybe have like accountability partners. Good, thank where you. We, you that's, know, that's share with yeah. each other, yes. so we kind of push each other. Good, good. How about prayer partners? Prayer partners. Prayer partners. Yes, prayer partners. Uh, my wife and I, we, 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 we are doing some Bible study together. So because we were on the plan together, there's a, well, call it healthy competition. Ah! I'm now two, ahead, two, two days ahead of you. I'm not prayer partners. Let's, you know, you, know, you know, put our resources together and encourage one another. I, I think I saw a hand somewhere here too. Okay, but I choose, choose Thank you. What can we do to encourage ourselves to ask more? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, what I want to say, I just want to give an example uh, before I say it. So, like a student writing an exam, instead of asking God to help you to pass, Ask God to help you to make distinction. Good. Push it up. Ask God to make you to make distinction. Then the other thing I want to add is uh, that understanding that God actually wants us to succeed more mm. than we actually want to succeed. So if we have that understanding, we can push it up. Exams, distinction. Hallelujah. If I'm getting a job, I have to get the best. If you are, if you are starting a business, why don't you... Ask God to make your business a multinational business, Hallelujah. not just a one-man show. Yes. Praise the Lord. And let it be on record in heaven that you asked. Exactly. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, because of our time, I guess we need to... Are you raising up your hand, ma? Very quick one. Yeah, okay. Encourage ourselves to be shameless in asking. Good, good. Be shameless in asking. Just, you know, don't, don't look at what, what are people saying. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I saw that and I thought I would just show it. When we rely upon organization, we get what organization can do. When we rely on, upon education, we get what education can do. And that's nice. When, but when we rely upon eloquence, we get what eloquence can do. But when we rely upon prayer, we get what only God can do. May there be many, many, many things in our lives that will say, this can only be God in the name of Jesus. And that's the conclusion. God is still looking out for those people who trust him. If a few words are missing there. God is still looking out for those who trust him enough to ask, to seek, and knock till they obtain the promise. Are you one of them? Are you one of them? Okay, we'll take questions, maybe one or two, and then maybe we can close it. Okay, we'll take, uh, I saw you first, so we can go that way. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir, for the teaching. 
And my question is this, that when we ask, and we've asked over years the same thing continuously, and like you said, uh, the prayer point is, is a known prayer point. Um, when or is there a time that you allow to to look into an alternative or you still have to persist in asking even when you've asked for years and when I mean years decades running with the same situation what do you do is there a time that you can not like okay maybe I need to look for an alternative here or I need to accept an alternative to this or praise the Lord Hallelujah. Very, very um, relevant question and maybe heartfelt question as well. Uh, the way you said it, I almost said, ah, I understand. But I remember that Baba Abraham, so, so, <laughs> That's a very good word for us, Lord. <laughs> so, is, that, is that okay? Good. Thank you, Sister Jane. Ah, it is not, I, I didn't plan for this many questions. <laughs> okay? Because I'm looking at time and we need to. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's just um, close to what she asked. So, when you have prayed for years, you've, you've knocked, you've prayed the desperado style, you know, desperately. And, you know, that proverb 13, 12 that my brother quoted before, you know, the heart becomes sick, you know, because of the deferred, you know, answer to your prayer. How do you come out of that, you know, sickness of the heart? Praise yeah, God. Um, thank you very much for that. And I think some of the answers have been... Do you want to answer that, Pastor? Okay, please, one minute. Yes, I'm, remind, I'm reminded now about the um, three Hebrew children. That when they went into the fairy furnace, they said our God is well able to deliver us. But if he doesn't deliver us, we'll go out. That Luke chapter 11 that we read today is asking us to ask. And in the end, it ends up talking about God giving us the Holy Spirit. I'm asking for a job. I'm asking for a wife. But that Luke 11 that we read today is talking, how would the God not give you the Holy Spirit? That's not what I'm asking for. I think, I think, what God is saying is that at the end of it all, even if you don't get that physical thing that you are asking for, the fact that you have me should be enough, regardless of whether the answer to that specific prayer yes or no. That's my view of that script because I keep wondering why at the end he's talking about give you the Holy Spirit. But the disciples ask a specific prayer about prayer and he explains how to pray and he ends up talking about giving the Holy Spirit. I think God is saying at the end of it all, the most important thing is me. If you have me and you don't have that other thing, you have everything. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pastor. That's a very pastoral <laughs> Response. <laughs> I was like, hey, Pastor, this thing is, he's a, he's a, I have God, I know. <laughs> I know I have God. Oh, this thing is, uh, I, I think the answer, um, it's one of those ones that we can never exhaust. But I, I, I would say, go back to God. Go back to God. Go back to God. Ask him that he should confirm to you what you should do. Go back to God. One of the things that we said in the place of seeking is that sometimes the Lord changes our motive. Sometimes the Lord changes our prayer point. Sometimes the Lord changes our focus. So while... Yeah, the Holy Spirit is there to satisfy us to, you know, and all that and all that. I believe 
for a since it's, it's a and it's a very difficult question that you've asked. I believe that for a desire that is that we have that is in line with God's will. I'll say wait. I'll say wait. There are far more evidence of those who waited and got it than those who waited and didn't get it. There are far, far more. Far, far more on that side. So I would still say, go, go to God, I've cross-checked, it's still been not in my heart, and I've almost had one like that in my life. I'm still holding on. Sister, hold on to God. Come back with your testimony. In Jesus' name. I think we need to... <laughs> you know what we'll do? Slido is there. Put your question on Slido. Put your comments on Slido. And then I will just, I've just dropped my own. I don't know whether it's pastor that's taken to next week. But I can, uh, I can hide behind him. Hallelujah. Please, because of time, and I, and I want us to pray. Pastor, I know you, I promised that I was going to... Do you still want to ask? Because I promised you before. So, okay. Thank you very much, sir. It's a very, very uh, blessing, blessed topic. I was just um, thinking about the ask, seek, and knock, and I was thinking about when some of us uh, wanted to get married. I think we started, we ask, and uh, the way the thing was going, we started seeking and, and knocking, and uh, God helped us to get what we were knocking about. But that wasn't really my point. My point is, I think, I think some of these things really, and sometimes as Christians, sometimes we ask, I just ask God and we get it, because that's the level we're on. And then as we're growing, God expects us to put in some more effort. Yes. So that, that's my experience. Some things I just asked before I got, yes. I found that I actually have to do a lot more to be able to get those things, because God expects us to not be children anymore. We need to grow up and put in some effort. Praise God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that. That's totally, totally accepted. Let's just rise to the place and time is, time, time is well spent. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to ask us to just to be... Sorry? Just one question. Uh, okay, sir. Let's go for it. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the question started by saying thank you so much for the teaching tonight. And uh, the person who then went further to ask, what does God really, what does God mean by asking you to ask anything of him? Does it really mean because he's unlimited or that anything you ask that he will really give to you? Uh, definitely the first one is unlimited. Um, anything that you ask, I think we addressed it with, in the case of seeking. Uh, that if it's not within his will, the Lord, if you seek God sincerely, it will change, it will change your motive or, or, or it, will, it may even change the prayer point. I think that's been addressed. Well, thank you very much for uh, the person that asked that question. I just want us to, let's just lift up our voices and just say, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the many things that we have asked of you that you have given unto us. Even many, many things that we have not even asked that you released into our bosom. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Please, let's make it, don't, don't, you know, let's make it very, 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 very sincere. Lord, we thank you. As many as you can remember, just thank the Lord for the various things that the Lord has released into our lives. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's thank God for the option to even ask in the first place. He is not a God that cannot be asked. He said, ask of me. Hallelujah. Ask of me and I will give it nations, even the nations. Let's just thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's honor him. I say, Father, sincerely, before we begin to even ask, oh Lord, Daddy, we just want to say thank you. And one of our brothers said testimony the other time. Let's thank the Lord for every testimony that we have received. Our God has been good. Our God has been good. He's been a loving Father. Blessed be your holy name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I'm going to ask us to just pray maybe one of just take this prayer. The Bible says that one of the disciples came to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Say, Father, please teach us to pray. 
Teach us to pray effectively in the name of Jesus. Teach us to pray effectively, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Teach us to pray in ways that will produce tangible results in the name of Jesus. Lord, if it is, oh Lord, my Father, for even the will to change, Lord, teach us, oh Lord, teach us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our prayers will produce great results. Our prayers will be great blessings, Lord, my Father, in the name of Jesus, as a church, as a family, individually, oh Lord, we pray, teach us to pray, teach us to pray, Lord, my Father, men always ought to pray and not to faint. Lord, take us from the level of fainting, in the name of Jesus. Yes, some of us have been waiting on things for years. Lord, we pray, teach us, Lord, my Father, to, to, to continue to pray until we receive the promise, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Teach us to pray, teach us to pray, Lord, my Father. You are a prayer answering Father. Let there be an evidence, Lord, in our lives. Yes, Lord, that you are a prayer answering Father indeed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A few prayer points here, but I don't know. This one came to my mind that we should pray. One of the last questions there. I want us to pray. That Lord, as many as have been waiting for a while, at the point of giving up, please strengthen them. Teach them what to do so that they can obtain the promise in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices and pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. It's part of encouraging ourselves to ask, Lord, we pray, as many, oh Lord, that are at the point, Lord, my Father, of giving up, they have been asking and asking. They have been asking and asking, Lord, my Father, we put to practice what you have taught us tonight. And we ask again, oh Lord, strengthen them, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. It may require just one more knock. It may be just one more knock that is, that is required. Lord, we pray. Give them the strength to knock this one, to knock the final round. In the name of Jesus, they will not give up at the point of breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in every area, it may be even me that I have been waiting for a while. Lord, in this month of blessing, Lord, may I step into the blessing that you have prepared for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh, prayer will not fail me. I will not fail prayer. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we pray as many genuine requests that are still hanging. Yes, Lord, my Father, by the reason of praying together tonight again, Lord, please, Lord, let answers come in the name of Jesus. Oh, you have promised that indeed there will be a transformation already. Lord, we pray, let that be our portion, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Every box still left unticked before the end of this year, as our God lives, Lord, we pray. Let those boxes be ticked in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As it was said of Jabez, that the Lord answered him. It will be said of us that the Lord answered us in the name of Jesus. We shall all come back with our testimonies. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word that you have sent unto us. We receive every strength and every grace that we need to go and prosper with the word, to come back with our sheaves, to come back with our harvest in the name of Jesus. Men will know indeed that you are a prayer answering, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, hallelujah. It's time to give our offering. It's time to give our offering. It's one of the ways in which we can honor the Lord. So please, I'm going to encourage us. Bring out your envelopes, your mobile phones, your gadgets. And let's give a worthy offering unto our Father. Uh, the Bible says that those who sow it is, they shall come back rejoicing with their sheaves in their hands. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. So please let's sow and the Lord will receive our offering.
Jesus name uh, I don't know is there any yes thank you thank you yes okay. um, as you prepare your offering there is an announcement here limitless worship night limitless worship night that's this Saturday the 28th of April um, the time is 6 p.m. and it's at it's in this hall everyone is invited please invite your friends to limited worship night be part of this what we saw tonight is just little come and see the full dose on saturday in jesus name let's let's package our offering very well for those of us that are online please uh, put in your offering as well just follow the instructions on whichever platform that you are on the Lord receive our offering in Jesus name and we please let's rise up let's let's pray and then we can close this father we just want to thank you thank you for the blessings of even giving especially giving unto you such a great blessing such a wonderful opportunity father as we have dipped our hands into the resources that you have given unto us to bless you back. Lord, we pray that let them be acceptable unto you. Let it be that whatever has come out will be replaced in multiples, multiples by thousands and millions in the name of Jesus. Let all these resources be used for your glory. Let them be used to proclaim your name all over the world in the name of Jesus. And as we go to our different homes, Lord, tonight, Lord, we pray. Preach this message to us over and over again. Holy Spirit, complete the work that you have started already tonight. Let it be that none of us will miss out on any of the promise that you have given unto us. Where we are stuck, Lord, we pray, please unstuck us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And when we come back again on Sunday, we will come back rejoicing. We will come back with our testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Can we share the grace together, please? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.